Welcome to a new lesson of the DH Foundation's course of Rails Canadian. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Twitter as Advasimbelandia. Also follow us at, as at Rails Canadian. We are on Facebook. Um, follow me on the Snapchat. And of course, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want us to, to upload more videos and new courses and etc. Okay, uh, first of all, go to the article of the video. And there you will find a markup of our HTML we will need for this lesson. So first of all, create a newsletter.html file, paste here the markup that is in the article, and um, create in the CF folder a newsletter.coffee file, and also a signed up.php file. And uh, you'll see why we need a PHP file in this lesson. Okay. So let's get started. Um, here we are using as Cloud9 as an IDE. We have received some comments of people that doesn't know uh, where, where are we working. So go back to previous lessons um, because we in previous lessons say, did a setup of this environment. Okay, so let's start. Um, we have seen uh, the shorthand methods of, G of IJAX of jQuery and Ajax, and we have seen dot get, dot get JSON, uh, the uh, load, and also there is another one that we haven't seen yet that is post. So in this lesson, let we're going to make a post uh, to the server. Uh, let me show you this file what uh, what this file contains. Uh, sorry, okay, we off this file, and here we have. A, um, a form for subscribe to a newsletter and uh, what we want to do is a post uh, send this form through Ajax and make a post request to the server so uh, let me show you here uh, let me show you so here in our newsletter coffee file uh, let me create the call for it so first of all, I'm going to get the form and I'm going to get the submit event. That's it receives the parameter that is the event itself. And we're going to prevent the default event prevent default. We don't want to send the form to the normal HTTP and reload the page. So we are prevent default. So, so we have a URL and in this case, well, we get the form and the attribute action okay so we're gonna make a post to this script that is saying up at PHP that doesn't have anything so because we don't need uh, you know that we make a post request when we want to save data but in this case we don't want to save anything so this can be blank file uh, anyways so okay so then uh, we want the data that the data can be a JavaScript object but in this case, we have a form, and in many cases, you'll need to send form data through Ajax. So we have a method, uh, the query method that is uh, serialized, that get all the, the, the form fields and convert converts that to um, string, encoded string, uh, for ready for send to, to any request, in this case, an Ajax request. So, in the article of the video, you'll see a link for serialized method. So go read it if you want to know more about it. So here we have the basics that is the form and serialized. Okay, here we get the data sent through the form. Next, uh, we want um, to make the post request. So that the query that post, and we we need a URL. We also need the data, and we also need a callback. Okay. So let's create a callback, and in the callback, once we send the, the, the data to post, we're gonna replace the HTML of this form with a message saying thanks for signing up to this new red to this newsletter. So here sign up uh, that HTML, and here we just make this thanks for signing up. Great. Uh, another important thing. Well, don't forget to to run the command for compile from CoffeeScript to JavaScript. Okay, and okay, and 
here we need to run the server. You know that a post request needs a web server. So that's why we use Cloud9 because it's really easy to have everything set up ready for this. So uh, we need to run the Apache server. So here in this tab, or here clicking run project, I prefer here, uh, you need to run the Apache server. So let's click it. And as you can see, here is the URL where Apache is serving the, our website. So let's click it, open it. And here we find the index that is um, the call center. Uh, here we may slash this learn.html for see our file and now our server is running and we can make post requests to it. Uh, okay. Right, so let's let's test it. And I'm going to send you my name. Uh, let's see. Well in, we need to check in the console for see the request, the edX request. And great, our post is records. I mean, for our post records is working and it's making a post call to sign up the PHP. But remember that this is a blank file. So it doesn't matter if we don't have to do anything. But we are just making a post through Ajax. Great. The next thing I wanted to show you is the Ajax method. Here you will find the post, the uh, query.post documentation, that this is a shorthand of the Ajax function. So we can we can use Ajax for anything, for everything. I mean, for everything. So this is the parent method of all the shorthands. So let's convert this to the Ajax method. Of course, let's take a look to the documentation, low level interface, and the query Ajax. So here you will find that we we need a URL and an object of settings, and the object of settings has a lot of things. Take a look to this. Okay, so let's use it. If you want to know more what, about what you can do with Ajax, you need to read all these and learn all the options that we can send here. So we have Ajax, and also we want to send an object. Okay, so he will send an object. We send the data, it's the data variable. We need uh, the type that is a post request, and we need a success callback. And uh, here we have a response, response, this is the function, and basically we do the same that we was we were doing with Ajax post. I mean for dollar sign the post. So let's try again. If it is working, uh, it should be working. So let's sign up again. And uh, it's working, yes, 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 it's working. When not, we are using Ajax and it's working. Why use Ajax and not the shorthands? Well, I, I prefer to use Ajax method because with Ajax method we can do more things and we have more flexibility. For example, you can set a timeout if the server um, takes more time than expected for response. For response, we can handle errors better. We can... Um, well, there are a lot of things we can do with the Ajax function, so I prefer to use it instead of the shorthands, but it's up to you. Okay, so um, let's go back to the post method. Okay, and here, as you can see, um, uh, let me delete this. Well, I added just some parentheses here. Let's take a look to the error. Um, yes. The, how, how we handle how do we handle errors in Ajax? So in case, for example, the server doesn't respond, or uh, doesn't respond, or any other unexpected behavior of the server, so we can use the fail method. And uh, here we have uh, it receives a callback, and the callback has a response. I mean, a jQuery XHR object. And here we can make an alert. Let's, for example, change this. Uh, sign up this the action or the URL of the form action to something that is missing. So we should see a 404 uh, error code error. So let's take a look. So jQuery execute object that status because this will throw an error. So let's see what we get. So I'm gonna reload the page and let's see what we get. We should see yes not found and here's the other with the error code and if we want to to take a look to this we also have a property called status test text and it's basically the same 
Okay, we need to reload here. Status text and it's not found. You can do whatever you want here in the fail function for show an error on the page. Said replace your message, the div with some, with an error message or whatever. Um, well, that said, basically, um, the fail uh, method only works with shorthands, post, get, uh, well, the, the basic shorthands methods, but not the load method. The load method won't work the fail the fail method. Okay. Uh, but basically, it works when you make a request to, to your own uh, web server. But in case you make a request to an external web server to get a JSON or get something outside of your web server, uh, we handle errors different. Um, that's what we're going to see in the next stage. So stay tuned because the next stage of the course will create a, a small application for a, make a feed of Flickr photos. So we're gonna connect to Flickr and get the photos and load them on the page. So don't forget to follow us in our social networks. Uh, like this video if you liked it. And see you the next lesson. Bye bye.